Let me start by thanking the Pathfinders and the brass band from Bugema Secondary School. I think they have left because their lunch, lunch was late and the guest is going to visit the secondary school so they, have, they had to leave early. But we want to thank them for coming and supporting our guest. Our chief guest, the president of Eastern Central Africa Division, Pastor Dr. Brashas Ruguri, the secretary of ECD, the treasurer, the president of Uganda Union, the president of North Buganda Field, retired Archbishop and former Vice Chancellor of Ugema University, Pastor Christian Alidechi, all um, union departmentals who have escorted our guests, all protocol observed. Good afternoon. Yeah. On behalf of Bugema University faculty, staff, stakeholders, and the entire Bugema fraternity, I wish to welcome you, Dr. Pastor Brasha Suruguri, to your alma mater. Karibuni sana. I've already introduced you the people I work with, but among the group, I think we missed Dr. Rosetti Kabuye, who is the dean of graduate school. And we also missed the, the head teacher of Bugema Primary School in the list, Mr. Dixon Ogwal. And we also missed the principal Bugema Vocational School, Madam Roy Nkamba, are you here? Bugema is comprised of three institutions, the primary school, vocational school, and the, and the university. These are all the departments that form the fraternity of Bugema University. <clears throat> we are so proud to have you on campus. And in this very place where your ministry career was formed. It is here you first tested the ABCs of servant leadership. As a university, we are not disappointed because your career in leadership has exhibited true patience and long suffering. For Bugema to produce a graduate who heads the largest SDA church division in the world. Can I repeat that? For, for Bugema University to produce a graduate who heads the largest SDA church division in the world. It is historical. And that's why I'm saying we are very proud. And so we are happy to welcome you back to your home. Yes, it has been many years since you marched out of the gates of Bugema. You may be wondering why we still have the old auditorium block and where we are here. Uh, why, uh, you know, we look the way we looked, you know, little difference uh, with a few additions as I'm going to elaborate. But we chose to come here first because you are used to this place. Secondly, we have a big auditorium, <laughs> a big auditorium that sits a capacity of 3,000 because this is a summer holiday. We didn't expect many people to come here. That's why we, we came in here. We called the primary school. Can I see students from primary school? Can you stand up, please? Because this is a part of our university. And you can see they are occupying the biggest portion of this. And so if you are not here, and then the vocational school. Let me see uh, those from the vocational school. Can you stand up? You are welcome. 
So noticeable additions include the separation um, of secondary school. By the time you left, we were together. We used to, to be in this chapel together. But finally, that left. Uh, that resulted in two, an increased uh, enrollment in students, as shown in the table provided in the folder. Uh, when it comes to infrastructure, we added the library, um, which is about 25 years old, but we have not completed it yet. Uh, we currently added a new auditorium, which you, you, you've been there before when Pastor Ted Wilson was here. We all congregated there uh, with a sitting capacity of 3,000. We have the new agriculture complex, the School of Theology block, the hospital, and the current nursing block. Those are the new additions we have made. I say the current block because nursing will soon move to the science complex which you have just seen uh, after its completion. We are thankful to our partners in the vicinity of Bugama University who provide housing for majority of our students. Uh, currently, we can only house 300 students in campus, within the campus. So majority of our students stay outside. So we're so thankful for our partners uh, around Bugema that have constructed hostels to house our students. So um, why haven't we registered significant infrastructure development? That's a question you should be asking. One major reason I can give you is that Bugema relies heavily on tuition fees from students. Rarely do you find a university developing her infrastructure uh, based on tuition fees. BU has not been able to grow her income base beyond tuition income. We want to thank our parents, ECD and UU, uh, who have always come in to advance us with the cash when we needed it. For example, we recently acquired a property worth Uganda shooting 600 million from Fokasese campus. And as I speak now, we have a permanent, <laughs> we have a permanent uh, address as required by National Council for Education. The director of Kasese campus is here. Madam, can you stand up so we see you? <laughs> Sister Mohindo, that's her name. She's the first born, so she takes that name, Mohindo. Uh, so, and because of that, uh, by January we had about seven, 70 students in Kasese. Currently, we have an enrollment of 256 uh, in Kasese. And so we want to thank the Uganda Union who advanced us with money at a reasonable interest rate. I must admit that the growth has been slow, but Bugema lives on. Though limping, we are kicking. This year, we are gearing up for the celebration of 75 years. The BU stands tall when it comes to training ministers for the gospel on this continent. We are the largest school of theology currently totaling 775 students enrolled both uh, full-time and, and in service. BU program like IT, business studies, specifically accounting, nursing, and theology are top-notch in East Africa and beyond. And our graduates don't, uh, they fare well on the, in the labor market. Uh, BU has a vibrant council and they are passionate about the six strategic direction, uh, which are institutional capacity development, financial sustainability, branding and image enhancement, business processing, management and quality assurance, and lastly, integrating the advanced philosophy of education in the university. I wonder whether we have any council member, I know uh, from the union uh, we have three, uh, actually four, but is there another council member who may need to be introduced? Uh, probably they're not here. And the number six, developing both the vocational training center and the primary school. I have enumerated uh, the goals and targets for this year. I'm not going to read this, but it's in your folder. 
But specifically, allow me to mention that uh, um, we, we, we as a union entity, we, look, we took seriously the Uganda Union 30, goal of 30% growth annually. And uh, that is the I will go plan. Uh, and so um, since January, um, when you look at our enrollment, which was 3,670, we have grown up to now 25%. We stand at um, 2,000, uh, no, sorry, 4,612 uh, <laughs> currently. Um, other targets you can read through. Um, um, but the recent happenings, we, we, we have a new church district. The North Buganda Field created the district of English uh, congregations. Uh, Ristak High School in Busika, Bugema Secondary School, Bugema Vocational School. We have another church here, satellite, I mean, Se Seattle Student Church, Bugema Advanced Primary School. We have another student church called the Forest Church down there at the agricultural block. And so, on the main campus, over seven congregations um, that form this district. And uh, we want to thank North Buganda Field. They gave us a pastor specifically to minister to us uh, this district. Um, we, are, we have been engaged in evangelism as Bugama University. We recently had a campaign in Busika town and over seven, 78 souls were baptized. We had a week of prayer here. Uh, we baptized 11 souls. We recently, a team of Bugama University went to Arua to, 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 to also for the evangelistic impact, and 42 souls were added to this church. Bugama fully complies with the Advanced Church Management System and also Church Financial Management System. And uh, if you went there, star uh, 291, star 7. And then you scroll down to number 18, you're going to see Bugama University. You can do your donation there. But of course, number one is your tithe and other offerings and so on. So uh, we are called upon to utilize and to um, use that uh, management, financial management system. These are the way forward. Uh, we are looking at building a, a financial base through establishing endowment funds, university grow by endowment funds. Uh, any family can start an endowment fund, the money is deposited in the bank, and the, the, the money that comes out as interest is used by the university. Um, so that's what we are targeting now. Uh, uh, we are going to appeal to alumni and friends, and there are very many, very many, for generous contribution to fund our infrastructure development which are badly needed. Uh, we don't have enough classrooms, boarding facilities are badly needed within campus, library e expansion is not completed yet, staff quarters, the guest house, and of course the administrative block. One time I threatened people here that I'm going to put my office on the tree because I don't want to go in that office where my principal was going the same office. And, uh, and the people responded. Um, Number three, steadily clear our indebtedness with the URA and other creditors. We want to complete the science block. Um, the estimated cost is about 400,000 US uh, dollars. Capitalized on the community-based farming initiatives that are sustainable and pr profitable. We have not done very well when it comes to agriculture and farming when we have the biggest land this is the university that has the biggest land in Uganda. Uh, we want to upgrade our vocational, uh, vocational program to, a de to degree programs. Uh, we want to offer civil, mechanical, and electrical in engineering degrees, and we want to transform that department into an IT um, incubation hub for our young people, our young innovators who can come in and, 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 and innovate. We are living in an age of artificial intelligence, and we cannot uh, afford it to leave our young people behind. We want to see them uh, becoming innovators. And uh, we want to invest in virtual learning so as to capture the market within and beyond our borders. And uh, lastly, we want to complete uh, plans for offering law degrees. 
Uh, our stakeholders are always on our neck, they're demanding this degree program, and uh, our target is um, our plans are in high gear, and by 20 school year, starting with the 2024-2025, we, we plan to start law program here on campus. <laughs> Allow me to make these three requests. Number one, we request you, our guest, Aluma Mata, to be an ambassador for your alma mater when it comes to cyber, cyber fundraising campaign which are ongoing. Uh, we request you to establish a fund, endowment fund in your name, uh, and the returns can benefit the university as you may guide. And also we request you to, to get us four radical friends, four radical friends who can break the roof for us so they can lower Bugema down on the foot of Jesus so that we can receive <laughs> a revival and healing. Once again, thank you for coming. We wish you God's traveling masses as you traverse this vast territory called ECD. May, may God bless you all. <laughs> At this juncture, let me invite the Chancellor, who is going to welcome you. The Chancellor is our, uh, our, our Union President, Dr. Pastor Moses Maka, to hand you this gift from Bugama University of Fraternity. The Lord is good. And all the time. It's so good to look in your faces. Some of you miss one thing. You have never been out of Bugema. But it's a nostalgic feeling when you come back home. And that's my feeling. And that's our chief guest's feeling. It's a pleasure to be back here. And we want to thank you. And we want to thank you for welcoming us so warmly. We know very well that it's only the time for the university, but for you to have gathered in such big numbers with all your professors back, we don't take it so lightly. And we want to say thank you. We are here to, as a union, to bring you some important guests. And these guests have given us a directive right from where they came from, that they are not going to visit anywhere in Uganda, not even at Uganda Union. But they said we want to go and visit Bugema University. And so from the airport, we just had a stopover. And then from there, we have come directly to nowhere but to Bugema community. Yeah. And that tells you the love for which they have for this institution. For our chief guest, he said, I want to go and visit those old parts. And he's here. to visit his alma mater after so many years. Like the Vice Chancellor has observed, Bugema is proud to have produced many, and one of them being our very own President of the Division. Yeah. 
The president of the division this time has broken some rules. Not only did he bypass our headquarters for signature first when he has landed, but he has also come to Uganda in a way that he doesn't go to other countries. He has come with the entire division with him. And those of you who know church administration, you will know that power and authority rests in the three. Right from heaven is the Trinity. And when the president is present, and the sector is present, and the treasurer is there, the entire institution is present. And so today we are privileged that Uganda Union is hosting the trinity of this division. <laughs> Dr. Blesha Suruguri doesn't need any introduction here. But he's accompanied by our division treasurer, Pastor Jerome Habimana. <laughs> and he's also here with the Executive Secretary, Pastor Dr. Musa Mitekaro. You will see them, they will come and uh, at, least, uh, at least say hi, and say hi. But uh, together to escort and give company and uh, security to our division leaders, we have the union officers here present also. And so the treasurer has taken security over, the treasurer of the union has taken security over the treasurer of the division, Elder Frank Chigundo. <laughs> and the one who is manning the logistics and security of the executive sector of the division is our own pastor, William Bagambe, the executive secretary. <laughs> But we have come also with the education director responsible for this university and our institution, Sister Lillian. <laughs> we also have the gentleman responsible for church development and stewardship in Uganda, Pastor Usava, present. <laughs> and the one who charts the strategic direction of this university and also in charge of health, Pastor Samuel Chizito is present with us. Uh, but our host is present. And we couldn't dare come into his territory without his permission. And that is the president of this field, Pastor David Simogerere. I cannot live without mentioning that our father, who went before us, uh, the former vice chancellor of Bugema, and also the Archbishop Emeritus Uganda Union, Pastor Christian Alidechi, is present with us. <laughs> but before I invite the leaders to say a word, uh, there is one person in our midst who you need to understand and know. Uganda is privileged. I say Uganda is privileged. Uh, that in our midst, the General Conference saw and he chose one person from among us, and he was elevated from Uganda Union, not only to the division level, but that person is responsible for the entire region of Africa, responsible for three divisions that make up Africa. And that's the Africa Region Director of Adventist World Region Radio, Elder Emmanuel Gua. <laughs> so he's resident here, but a man of uh, many wings. We are happy to have you present. Uh, Mr. President, I am happy to welcome you to Bugema University of Mameta. <laughs> we are proud of Bugema. And Bugema, though he says he's limping and kicking, it has started kicking seriously. And soon, it shall go out and run. 
like a gazelle. COVID had reduced this institution to 2,000 students. But with the efforts of uh, Pastor Cafero and the leadership of the university, they have sprung up again to 4,600 students. <laughs> Our challenge to them is that as we go towards 2025, with the impact 2025, and also as Uganda nears its 100 years of celebration of Adventism. We want this university to become one 10,000 strong student body in this land of Uganda. <laughs> so with their growth of 30%, we believe that they can be able to make it by God's grace. We want to thank them for they have been compliant and uh, we know what is happening here now. And we are proud of them that uh, they are working together with us. Uh, this is not my day. Uh, the vice chancellor has already given his report. I will come for my own day. This day is for the big man, the first son of this division. And uh, before he comes, allow me to, uh, to give you a privilege of having to hear the voice of our treasurer of the division, Pastor Jerome Habimana, and then I will tell you what will come thereafter. Elder, may I request you humbly to come and say hi to these sons and daughters of God who are waiting. Welcome, Elder. <clears throat> okay. Greetings to all of you, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> I'm very, very happy, extremely happy to be with you today. This is not the first time to come to Bogema. I've uh, uh, visited you many times, but it is the first time to come and accompany our division president here. So it is a special day, not only for you, but for me also. <laughs> so I praise the Lord for Bogema. And we always keep you in our prayers, and we thank you for everything you are doing. We praise the Lord for the growth we are seeing, and all I can say, keep pressing on, and lead on, and the Lord will continue being with you. We will keep you in our prayers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, I want to give you the privilege of hearing the voice of the Executive Secretary of our division, Pastor Dr. Musa Mitekaro. I'm happy to be here with you. Um, I have not been uh, that much in this area at this university. I think if I remember, uh, this, this must be uh, the third time. Otherwise, I'm so really happy to see the development of this university. You know, our chief, Dr. Ruguri, uh, when he invited us to come with him, why am I using that, that word exactly when he invited us? This is his pastoral visit to Uganda. <laughs> and uh, therefore, uh, he extended a uh, welcome to Pastor Bimana and myself, uh, we said we can't afford to stay at ECD while our chief is leaving to Uganda. By the way, Bugema University is a very historical university. People out there speak well about you. It's our prayer that you maintain a high level of that good name. 
And may God bless you. Amen. It's my privilege and honor to invite your visitor, my visitor, to his own school, to his own pulpit where he started ministry from, so that he can relieve the feeling. Pastor didn't want to rest anywhere until he had visited Bugema. And we want to give him the privilege to come and visit and talk to you so that his heart can be at peace to visit other places of Uganda. <laughs> Pastor, it's my honor to invite you to come and talk to your children. First of all, thank you very much for these uh, very international standard gadgets. They, they are very powerful. I think uh, leaders, you will bear witness with me that uh, many places where we have been, we have not used this standard. This is only Bugema. <laughs> uh, they have also tried in many places to give me gifts. I don't know whether you call this one a gift. And if it is, I don't know what kind of a gift it is because it is myself. <laughs> When someone gives yourself to you, then I don't know what you can say. And I don't know really where you retrieved this image of me, more handsome than... <laughs> I think I am. Uh, and it is to me a sign of love. Yeah. I try to share this to let my treasurer, Jerome, see and look at it because he has ever seen many, many uh, pictures of myself given to me. And he said, Pastor, these people love you. <laughs> I, I don't know which, in, which internet you visited. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't remember when I ever took this picture and where, but Bugema couldn't know it. Uh, Dr. Maka, our chancellor for Bugema University at this current time, and also our president for Uganda Union, fellow officers from Uganda Union, Pastor Bagambe and Chigundu, Thank you for coming along with us. Uh, Sister Mugerua, and of course, uh, other leaders from the union, too many to count and to mention at this point in time. They warned us from the airport that today will be a very fast day. It will be a quick moving day because we have several stations uh, to stop by and uh, greet people and uh, see them. Uh, I can tell you something right at the start. Uh, if you think you have a privilege to meet us and to see us, I will turn that around to tell you we are the ones. The three of us from the division are the ones who feel more privileged to meet with you and to see you. You mean so much to us. You are of such great value to us. Uh, the territory we serve is such a large, large, large territory. And we may not have 
as much time as we may want to to visit everyone in every country. We don't have the opportunity to visit all the universities we have in this division. They are multiplied by numbers and uh, there are several campuses we haven't even been to. Uh, I remember Dr. Mitakaro when we were in Arusha uh, for the university, ECD University Summit just uh, I think a month ago we met the vice chancellor the vice chancellor from one of the universities in DRSC very very far away from the known areas of that big country and he was he was just crying tears to say pastor please plan to come and visit our university our faculty there, our staff, our lecturers, our students, our council members are dying to meet you and to share with you uh, the dream they have. We have not even come to the place where we can say when we will ever visit that campus. And there are many uh, in this division. This division has grown in many, many aspects of ministry, and one of them being education. Uh, we have thousands of uh, high schools, elementary schools, and now universities are also multiplying. And so, uh, while Dr. Mitakaro and uh, Elder Jerome can say, well, uh, Pastor, thank you for inviting us, it was not actually for me or for my blessing that I decided to invite them, but I just wanted them also to enjoy the blessing of visiting a campus like Bugema. <laughs> and, and you can see, if you know how to see, uh, if you look at their faces, you can tell these are happy men <laughs> just, just for being here in Bugema. They are happy and I know leaders, you are blessed. Bugema, as far as I'm concerned, is not just a school, it's, a really, it's really a home. It's really a home. I had a farm here in Bugema. I planted cassava, I planted groundnuts. Uh, those were times when life was very different in this country because of a regime that was here a few years before I came over here. And there were no provisions of essential things which people would need to have. We used to live and eat food without salt. <laughs> Bishop Aridech was there that time with me. He was a classmate years before he, he graduated. I think I came in and then he, we were in one classroom for a few, a few, a few months. But Pastor Aaron Trumurjendo was my classmate from beginning to the end. <laughs> a very, very resilient man. A man who will fight with nobody in this planet. Unless he changed, he was a man of peace, and we all borrowed a lot of values from him. No wonder, <laughs> no wonder he has refused to grow old. Actually, when I saw him uh, at the place where we greeted our leaders of the university, I thought I was probably meeting his younger brother, <laughs> whom I had never meet, met, or his son. I, knew, I used to know his son, so I know very well he didn't exactly look like his father, but later I realized it was uh, Harun himself. And Pastor, thank you very much for refusing to grow old. 
and for remaining with the peace of God in your heart. These are two leaders who are here who were with me those years when he, and I was a very young, young student, uh, never, never knowing where I was going, but all I knew is I was in Bogema. I loved Bogema. Bogema gave me the quality of life I had never met before. Uh, the Ugandan people are very, very hospitable people, loving people. They took me in their hands at a time when I couldn't even go back to my country, Kenya, because of the situation, security situation in the country that time. And I, I would stay here for as long as it was impossible to go back home. And I was, I was taken care of by everyone. Everybody was, the ladies were like my mother, all of them. And uh, when there was no salt at all, and really there was no salt, and you know how food without salt tastes. Some of them gave me brown, red salt. They said they dug from some funny places. Uh, yeah, we would clean it as much as we could and then use it for food. Then I remember, I don't know if you remember, there was the brother Bambale from the mountains, the Lorenzori Mountains. He came one time with the leaves. He said, these leaves are the best for cleaning clothes. Yeah? So we would use those leaves to clean our clothes. But then the clothes would smell for three months. <laughs> you could not hide if you use those leaves to clean your, your, your shirts because of the smell. And the smell was very bad. It was not a good smell. But at least the shirts would be clean. And uh, what can you do? It was a tough life, but we, we endured. And let me tell you, one thing I learned here was the value of endurance. I, I pity people of this generation who always live their lives mourning because they don't have this and they do not have that. If you want to live your life like that, you will never, never go anywhere. You have to familiarize yourself with the suffering. And if there is one area of life which shapes people to become people of quality, it is actually suffering. If you just know how to handle it and how to manage it. Uh, and the reason why I like coming back to Bugema and probably Dr. Cafero, our dear Vice Chancellor, it is to remember the footprints. You know, life has footprints. Some are visible, others are not visible. And when you get to a place like this one, you need to check and find out whose footprints you are walking on here whether you see them or you don't. Life is about remembering where you have been and where it has taken you from. It is not just about the joys of the present life. Sometimes the present life does not offer you things that might take you where you really want to go. Uh, I just wanted to come back to Bogema. And I have heard, Dr. Cafero, the prayers you have made about creating an endowment fund. I, I heard you. You, are, you. Already you have triggered something in my mind. And I don't know yet how I will do it, but I know I will do it. I know I will do it. There, there, are, many things, there are many things in this life that you may not know how you might do them. But do not, do not surrender before you try. Life is about trying. It's about trying. You see, if I had a lot of time here in Dr. Maka, I would tell these people a lot of stories. You know I am very notorious uh, in telling stories. But, but because you warned me, 
because of course you know the day is short. Will you allow me to just tell them one small story? <laughs> because you see, when you don't have a lot of time to say this and this and this, just use one story that will tell all the things you want to say. All right? In the, in the, in the, in the gospel, according to St. Luke, chapter 4, if you begin verse 18, Jesus was actually articulating his mission statement there. And today you know people become... Uh, very, very scientific. They, they like uh, posting mission statements. Some of them post vision statements. Uh, you go to a school like Bogema, you go to an office like Uganda Union, you come to a division office like ECD, you will find, by the way, Dr. Metekaro, have we posted our mission statement anywhere at the premises of the division or even vision statement? We better do it because that vision has just caught me just now as I'm standing here. Uh, you know, there are places you stand and then all visions start to come in. <laughs> uh, I just remember, Dr. Jerome, we need to print it in, in serious colors and post it at a central place. It is very important to say what you are about and to tell yourself what you are about. It is not fair to live your life aimlessly. You, you don't know where you are coming from, you don't know where you are going. And the mission statement is actually about what your, the purpose of your being is. Don't, don't just live your life like that. Say what, think. One evening you sit down and wonder, what, what, what are you about? What are you living for? Why are you eating food? Are you sure you are not wasting food on this earth? Because this business of breakfast, lunch, dinner, every day could be the best way to waste resources. For some of us who are busy here doing nothing. <laughs> you know, nothing. So Jesus articulated his mission statement, Pastor. And he talked about a number of things. And one of the things he said was that he came to open the eyes of the blind. The way I love that one. Because unless you have sight, you will never know the way of where you want to go. Uh, but when you look, we studied some Greek here, uh, a lot of Greek, and I was a very good student of Greek. Aaron, Aaron remembers that one. I, I used to mark their papers. Uh -huh. You think I was joking around here? <laughs> no. But, uh, I was a very good student, and uh, I remember Professor Ruben Mugerua, who was our New Testament teacher, our language, Hebrew and Greek teacher, used to, to know that I, I, was, I was among the best. So when I, whenever I read my Bible, even today, I have no fear to look at what the Greek language says about some of the ones that are used in the New Testament, especially when you look at the original language. So when you see, when you go and check, what Jesus meant when he said he came to open the eyes of the blind, to give them sight. Actually, the word used is correctly translated to give them vision. So I went and checked the difference between sight and vision. Some of you don't know. Uh -uh. Listen, th there's a difference between sight, uh, Professor Kafero and, and, and vision. Now, sight is the ability to see things as they are. Uh huh. But now let me tell you, vision is better than that. Vision is not ability but capacity to be able to see things as they could be. As they could be. Now, you may be happy today because of how you are. 
not realizing actually you could be much better. Ah, you people, man, you people, man. <laughs> sorry, man, sorry, man, sorry, sorry, man. I know I have lost you already because your mind is so slow. <laughs> you don't want to understand. What did I say sight is? Sight is the ability to see things as they are. You see me as I am now. Short or tall? Talk to me now. Am I short or tall? If you want to be honest with me, I am just a short, short guy. That's, that's, that's for real now. That's sight. But sight is very deceptive. <laughs> it can cheat you easily so that you start thinking about somebody who is very tall as being very short. Ah. Because the problem is not the person you are looking at, it is the sight you have. Hey. You, you, you may need to go for high check before you judge the stature of some people. Some people are taller than you think. So you need, you need to have the capacity to see things as they could be. You may be short today, but you might be very tall tomorrow. Uh -huh. Now, I'm just using that, that description of size or height. But I'm also including in that description many things. You could be poor today, but you are not made for being poor. You are not a material for poverty. Uh -uh. You guys are suffering for nothing here. Jesus said, I came to open the eyes of the blind so that they can see where they could be. You see, you can have this, this university with a roof which is broken at the corner. There. But you know what, Pastor Dr. Cafero? I don't think this university is, is, is a material for having a roof like that one. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, I'm not really saying this in bad faith. I'm not in any way despising anybody here. I think even before Dr. Cafero came, that roof was like that. So it, it is not his fault. Yeah, but it could be a fault of some of you here. But that is beside the point. The point is to open the eyes of the blind. And it is, a, it is very unfortunate that many people don't know that they are a bride. Then he said something else. He said, and I also came to set at liberty. Now take that very seriously. You know, I'm just picking them I'm not picking them in their order, but uh, uh, Dr. Dr. What is, uh, Dekeja, my friend, my classmate also. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Dekeja. Uh, a man of great, uh, great determination. I have never seen a guy with a determination like in Dekeja. When everybody else was mourning and crying about grains, the Kedja, even when he gets an F. <laughs> I, uh, I am not so, I'm not saying that he got an F. I am saying, even if he got an F, he was full of smiles. Always full of smiles. And leaders, it would take one more test and the Kedja would be at the level of A plus student. That's him. He never allowed anything to intimidate him. 
I admire people like him. You know, what am I trying to tell you, my leaders here? This life is very challenging. Jesus said, I came to set at liberty those who are captives. Captives of various elements in this life. Captives of forces from within. Elements, uh, people are captives because they look at others and they feel smaller. Let me tell you, don't allow anybody to make you feel small. Stand, stand on your feet. You are an authentic human being. You are not a reflection of another. You people are not hearing me. I am trying to lift you up. Because this is what Jesus said he came to do. To release the captives from the forces which pull us down. And they are not few. In every classroom there is one guy planted there to pull you down. In every church there is one church elder who will never give you one encouraging word. Every time he will look at you and say, hey, I thought you were improving, but the way you look today is worse than you looked yesterday. <laughs> they are there everywhere. And then you allow people to make you a captive. You are always intimidated. You are always recoiled. You do not want to raise your face up because so-and-so might see me and tell me one more negative word. You have to be careful about people like that, those who render you a captive in a free world. Huh? People who even after you have bought a nice suit, nice suit, he will come and say, ah, where again did you buy this one? <laughs> where did you buy that one? Colors that are, are good are there. But you don't see. Eh? You buy a good pair of shoes like this one of mine. He comes around and says, look at you again. Nothing to lift you up. Those are forces that put you into prison. Mental prison. Jesus said, I came to set the captives free. Free. Now, my, my short story, and I could, I could expound this for quite some time, but let me tell you the story. There was this girl. This girl, this girl was born in a poor family, Pastor Bagambe. <laughs> you know, in our teaching of stewardship, uh, we believe that God has given us the ability to make resources out of anything. After all, God himself taught us how to do life. Did he not create this whole world from nothing? Yeah, Jerome. Don't, don't always ask for a loan to start your life off. Start with no loan, brother. Yeah, create money from nothing. Yeah. If you don't know how to do it, come and visit with me. I'll show you how to do that one. Yeah. And, and especially now that my, my, my vice chancellor here has challenged me to create uh, uh, an endowment fund. You wait, Pastor. <laughs> I am going to use some people I don't even know to create that fund for me for Bugema. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know there are people who are making money out there for you and you don't know. Yours is to collect the money. Many of them. And they have too much money they even don't know what to do with it. But you are too shy to go out and uh, collect it. Yes, my elder. I'm not lying here. 
They are there. So this young lady, Kanga, this girl, was born without the legs. She had no legs. The, the le there were small, small legs which were sticking somewhere here. Have you ever seen those legs? And it's, the hands were smaller than the legs. But she had a good face. Use what God has given to you, which is good. If you have no legs, no hands, but you have a good face, use that face. Some of you have very good faces, but you don't even use it. I wish I can take it away from you. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Always looking down. Always looking down. You never let people see your face. And that face is the investment that God has given to you. Or talking. Me, I'm a noise maker. Yeah. And I'm not shy of making noise. I make my noise during the day and during the night. Confuse people with my noise. Until they give me what I want. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> so, this girl was there at home. And she could not do anything because she had no legs, she had no hands. She was always observing her mama doing all the work at home. So one day, of course she was getting very, very depressed because she was always having this prayer that I wish I had my legs like other people. I wish I had my hands like other people. I could also help my mama do what she's doing all by herself. It's very, very sad. So she never even wanted to go out of the compound because she was, she was ashamed of herself. She did not look the way other people looked. And, and she was very intelligent. Uh, you know, intelligence is one thing. Having legs, having no legs is another thing. Having no hands is another thing. At least she had the intelligence. And so she was able to know what people were thinking about her. And, and the visitors who would come to visit her mama, she, they, they would talk out there and she would be listening. And some of them were making remarks about her, which were very unkind and very negative. Sometimes wondering whether she should even be alive, whether she is not a curse in the village, whether she was not a bad omen, even to her mama, bad talks, and she would listen. So, but her mother was a very bold lady. One day she told her daughter, said, you know, my daughter, you have not gone out. Uh, when I went downtown yesterday, I saw a chair uh, which one can push, and I want to buy that chair for you. I'll be pushing you in this chair, and I want to take you to church this coming day of worship. So the mother went and bought that chair for her, came and picked her up and put her on the chair, and uh, I don't know whether it was Sabbath or Sunday, put her in there, and then go, they went to church. But she told Mama, don't, don't take me in front, just put me somewhere at the corner. I don't want people to look at me. Mama said, no problem, my girl, I will put you where you want. So she was put there in a very uh, obscure corner, and she was sitting there, and the preacher that day uh, came. You know, preachers, some preachers are good preachers. This preacher, Pastor Bagambe, came that day with a big Bible. And you know the passage he read? Luke chapter 4, from verse 18, the one I have been sharing with you here. So, so the preacher talked about Jesus coming down here with a mission to open the eyes of the blind, to set the captives free, to, 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 to rescue the, oppro the oppressed. Oh, and she was listening, man. Don't think she, she didn't have the brain to listen. She was listening. And, and as she was listening, she started working inside her heart. She said, oh, now I know the formula. I know how I am going to be free from today. Amen. 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 At least I have eyes, even though I did not know what I can become. I could not see what I could become. She had a sight, but she had no vision. 
So the vision started coming. She said, I am not going to live my life like this. You have to decide in your own mind that you are not going to live your life the way you are. You have to change it in Jesus' name. Amen. But you have to decide. So she, when they went home, uh, she never said anything to her mother, but uh, right from the next day, when the mother went out to work, she said, I'm going to train these little legs I have, these little hands I have, to do some work. You know what she did? She took a broom, held it with those, those small toes she had, which are much, much smaller than what you have. Let me tell you, if certain people could have the long legs you have and the strong hands you have, they, they could make exploit for themselves. So this girl trained herself to sweep using these small legs, which can't even have a grip of the broom well. But she trained them and she started sweeping the compound. And when she looked back at the compound, she said, this compound looks cleaner than when it is done by the people who have good legs. So when mama came back, she said, hey, Jane, who cleaned the compound for us today? She smiled. She said, mommy, I'm the one who did it. Huh? How could you do this? How did you do it? She said, don't worry. I know how, mama. Don't worry. But I'm the one. Serious? Yes. Then she strained herself to wash clothes. Legs that are this size. She started washing clothes slowly by slowly. Slowly by slowly, slowly by slowly. And let me tell you, as she was using those short legs, they were getting longer and longer. Of course, they couldn't be very long, but a little longer than they were. And they could easily now know how to, to make the friction so that the clothes can get clean. And she used to clean those clothes much cleaner even than people with the strong hands. But the next thing she did, which surprised everyone, she had seen her mama milking the cows. She said, I'm going to try to help my mother to milk these cows. I don't want to see her come and start milking cows in the dark when I'm sitting here. So she would carry a bucket with those legs and she's walking with her behind. What can she do? She's lifting the bucket with those small legs crawling with her back until she would go right below, at the bottom of the, of the cow. The cows didn't even know what was it that was below them. They, they had seen human beings, but they had never seen this kind. <laughs> so just the joy of seeing a peculiar human, a, a peculiar creature attracted the cows. So they started licking her head, licking her cheeks, licking her nose. And she was so loving, the cows loved her, and there now she, she bent down, leaned on something, I don't know what it was, lifted her toes, and it started squeezing the, the teeth of the cow with the bucket below. And one bucket of, was full of milk. Where, and the touch, the touch of her tender toes were so soothing to the cows that they released all the milk they had never released it before. <laughs> let, let me tell you something, people. You have to know how to touch people. <laughs> Some of you have so hard looks on your faces. Leave alone the, the roughness of your fingers. Baba, uh, use some lotions. If, if your hands are too hard and rough and, 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 and learn how to, to touch the hearts of people so that you can agitate the, 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 the sympathies and the, and the passions people have. People are good, but if you don't deal with them tenderly, they will lock up and you will get nothing from them. Pastor. Then you will start going around accusing people of not ever helping you in anything. How can they help a guy who, when you look at them, they faint, 
because your face is so rough. Your eyes are so hard. Are you guys hearing something here? I'm teaching you something about life. There are some of you who don't even know how to laugh. Eh? A preacher stands up here. He preaches a serious sermon. When everybody else is laughing, for you, you're only wondering, what is everybody laughing at? I'm hearing nothing here. And then you think, after that, you will go for help from anyone. And then you get it. You will never get it. So this little girl touched these cows with those tender toes. And the cows loved it. They loved it. So they released the milk. She filled the bucket. She, she couldn't carry. She couldn't carry the bucket. So she pushed it slowly, slowly assigned, brought another empty bucket, put it below the, the cow's mammary system, and then she started again. She continued, and there was no end to the milk. When she touched those cows with those toes, oh, my Lord, the cow that was producing five gallons, 10 and 15. Yeah. Why not? This, these were tender touches. Tender touches of a loving girl who has nothing to fight about with the cows. They loved her, she loved them. So, when the mama came back, pastor, buckets of milk were full. And then the mama said, Jane, tell me the truth. Who did this? She said, Mama, you left me here alone. Nobody visits me, you know. When young men are looking for women to marry, you know where they go, they don't come here. There is nobody interested in me. I don't care. I will work with our cows. So, <laughs> the report about what this girl was now doing went far and near, went far and wide. People started coming to their home to see the accomplishments of the young girl who has no legs and no hands. It went international. And one rich family from the US decided to fly to India. She was an Indian girl to come and see this spectacle of a girl with no legs, no hands, doing much better than people with full legs, like you and me, people with no hands, or I mean people with full hands, and she's doing much better. Pastor, there is nobody who did not come. So one, this, one, this one family from the US came, a family of tall, 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 tall people. That's why I told you, uh, you never know what size someone is unless you have the vision rather than the sight. If you are using your sight, you are going to have very false images of the things you see in life. So as they were busy uh, looking at what she is doing and how she is doing it, one son in this family, billionaire family, pastor, tall guy. He announced to his parents that he has fallen in love with this young girl <laughs> and he's getting married to her. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He went and he picked her hand because you know she was like a pumpkin. She, she <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she didn't look like you or me. She looked very funny. So it's a th she was just a thing you can pick. So he went and picked her, kissed her, and said, she's my, she's my wife from today. So, and the mother, the mother of the son said, my son, you have gotten the best. The father said, this is the biggest favor you have ever done to us, our son. <laughs> they poured all their dollars to this family the mother became the luckiest woman on earth because of her daughter. They established 
an orphanage center there for care for disabled children and this 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 piece of this piece of a girl became the managing director <laughs> and she employed many people because money was no longer a problem yeah she established an endowment fund <laughs> which which <laughs> professor professor <laughs> With money she never worked for. All you need is to know how to attract money, pastor, to come to you. Some of it you don't have to work for. Why can't you make Bugema an attraction center? An attraction center, pastor. And there are a million ways of taking advantage of all these talents we have here in Bugema. Our young ladies, our young men, our older men, our older women. If you can sit down one day and try to exercise your thinking and the powers of imagination, because God has vested them in you. You have only been lazy. You don't want to think. You come, you sit here, you worship. Sometimes you don't even worship. But you just sit to just feel good that you came to church and impress someone who has been following you about your Christian journey. And then you, you go back home. But let me tell you people, use your powers of imagination. Use your creativity, pastor. You know, elder, and I'm not in any way saying you did anything wrong, but I really don't believe myself in this business of other people funding your projects. I don't believe in it. Uganda Union, Dr. Maka, is a serious union with very intelligent people. All you need, Pastor, is to begin convening meetings only for thinking and fasting. You come up with ideas you have never, ever thought about. Become that girl. Start sweeping without the legs. Start sweeping without the hands. Start milking without hands. Milk everybody. <laughs> Cows are many who are looking for milking. Someone to milk them. Amen. Amen. Thank you for my picture. God bless you. We are going to milk everyone. <laughs> now I know the staff and faculty are going to meet the guest in this other special room, but uh, allow me to request you to stand up so that you can, you can see all of staff and faculty of Bugama University and also staff of vocational and primary, please stand up. You are most welcome. I've seen the director of our hospital, uh, Dr. Lukaka, can you come in? You're hiding outside there. Recently, we had a medical camp here. Our local doc, the, med, the doctors who came from Alinda, we have a, 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 a theater here in our hospital, but they feared to operate from here. So our local doctors uh, is the medical director, they operated over 160, 20 patients. patients were operated in one week for free. And of course they did. So thank you so much, all of you, for supporting and encouraging us. Ladies and gentlemen, um, we're having the children's uh, choir presenting an item and when they are done we'll be going for a group photo after which having gotten this good fellowship we'll go for the swallow ship <laughs> now in the realm of the speaker if you only see with your sight there are four 
but for us with the vision to come for a closing prayer. Pastor Rugudi may come and bless this congregation. May all stand up. Now because you stood up, I will invite Elder Pastor Jerome to come and pray. He is our warrior of prayer. Let us humble ourselves as we pray. <clears throat> Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much this afternoon. We praise your name because you are a powerful God. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your greatness. Thank you, Lord, for your glory. 
and for your saving grace. This afternoon, Father, we have come here to this campus. The campus which started a long time ago, the first born university in this division. Thank you for what they have done from the beginning to date. We can witness what is happening on this campus today. The leader has given us the report and we cannot thank you enough because of what you have done to this university. We can say that things are changing and things are going to continue improving. Yes, there are so many challenges that he has mentioned, but what is a challenge before you? You are the one who gives the solution to each problem. You are the owner of everything. There is nothing you will not give us when we will come to you and be guided by you and you alone. And so, Father in heaven, we want to ask you to be the provider. All the means the leaders are going to use, give them wisdom to do what is right so that anything they want the way they have planned to improve this university, things they need to pay, debts and all the buildings they need to start and those they have started which need completion, Father, be their provider. We know this university has formed so many people who have changed not only this country of Uganda, but the whole continent of Africa and beyond. Continue to be the leader of these people as they form your children who will go and preach the good gospel to the world. Change the world and do things you have promised you will do through your children. And so now, Father, we ask you to continue give them the possibility and the wisdom to shine as they have committed themselves. Guide the vice chancellor and his whole team. Show them that you are their savior and there is nothing impossible when they are with you. As we also continue to pray for them, give us wisdom to ask what is necessary to improve this campus. And bless all the students who come here. Yes, the enrollment has grown and it will continue because we know you are the one who does it. Bless all the students who come to study here. Bless their families. Continue to guide and be our leader, we pray in Jesus' name. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, as I speak, I beg that Madam Alice and the friends could already be organizing the place out there for the group photo. But this is going to be the order. Uh, you would allow our guests to move out or through the hallway, and they alone shall use that door. Uh, the rest of us will have to use these different exits, and then after the photo is done, we will proceed to the cafeteria for lunch or for a meal, given the hour, or for a meal. And uh, I understand that there is enough prepared for all of us. But should you miss, come to me after everything. I'll pray for you. <laughs> and won't feel the hunger. But right now, now that we are done, Allow me 
possibly request my vice chancellor to lead the guests as we go for the photo. The rest of us will use the different exits and then we'll be ready. Uh, after everything, we'll have departure at will. Now the group photo is for our guests and the staff and faculty. Yeah. 